The pros is record labels obviously have a very large budget for artists to work with, right? So because of that, that leaves a lot more headroom for the artist to be able to do other things. And I think that that's definitely something of value that artists obviously are looking towards when they're considering record label deals because most artists are um, either making minimum wage or not making ends meet. Most of them are living paycheck to paycheck, just trying to live their dreams. So um, the idea of getting a budget from a record label is very appealing. I agree. I agree. It really is just who you want to be when the lights turn on. Like I said, my record, go hard. <laughs> like You feel me? Like At the end of the day, like if you're signing with a major label, and let me just, uh, let me put this out here. I've been on both sides of the fence. Mm-hmm. So I've been with a major label, and I've been independent. And as it stands, I'm independent. Although low-key, your boy signed himself, so am I truly independent? <laughs> Hmm. But <laughs> yeah, so I've been on both sides of the, uh, of the fence, and I would say that you know there are pros and cons for sure mm. for each side, and it just depends on who you are as an artist, the type of team that you have, and and what they bring to the table, how hard you're willing to work. Because at the end of the day, if you're with a major label, I mean, it's cushiony when it comes to the amount of work that you got to do as an artist depending right. on how much the label rocks with you. Right. Right? So if the label rocks with you hard, and if you you multi-platinum selling artists, like, it's, it's cushiony. But mm-hmm. if you are an artist who is just starting out, then the likelihood is um, you probably should have stayed just independent until you got your buzz up because they're not going to treat you like a major label artist. They're going to treat you like somebody who just signed to a major label, and that always looks a lot different. It's like... It's like being in the starting lineup uh, if you're playing in the NBA and being, right. and, and, and being one of the five that's actually playing versus being being on the bench and just waiting to get some tick. Right. And I think I think what you said is really true. Like if the if the label rocks with you, then the artist will probably have a higher likelihood of success. But labels are really looking for that that value that's already established within independent acts prior to signing them. As you and I both know, labels tend to be very choosy. So they're not very, I won't say not, because there's there's exceptions to every rule and every invisible rule. But um, I think that the majority of the time, record labels are not looking for independent artists who have 100 followers or very few streams on Spotify or any of the DSPs. They're really looking for someone who has that built-in fan base. And if you're a mid-tier artist who is independent and has a fan base already and is already making waves on your own, you're probably going to attract some level of a record deal or or a record label's A&R's interest. And from there, they'll probably reach out and offer you something. Maybe. Now what? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, what it is that they offer is going to be the thing because the majority of the time independent acts are offered 360 deals and I think that one has to highly consider all of the elements that go into that because a 360 deal means that the label basically takes some of everything that you do. You're you're going to be splitting your record sales, your merch sales, your concert sales. They're taking some of everything. And some independent artists are like, I don't care. I just want the exposure. I want the money. I want whatever it is that they are offering because they want the deal. Some people will simply just want to have that deal because they want the appeal of, or the mass appeal of being signed with XYZ major label. But what does that mean for the independent act in the long run? 